Hi, I'm Jamie Carragher, and you are listening to Across the Park Podcast. Welcome to Across the Park Podcast, the only place you can hear banter and debate from both sides of Stanley Park, whether it be blue or red. Sponsored by Their Clothing, Camper Kings UK, and affiliation with Betmate. Hello and welcome to Across the Park Podcast, Game On. Thank you so much for joining myself here, Mills and Andrew Price, the two Evertonians, Teddy McGiven and Phil Roberts of the Two Reds. We are going to be playing a couple of competitive games tonight. We're going to go way back in the time machine uh, this week in history. Everton's week in history is from 2005. Liverpool's is 2011. So we'll give you a few minutes there to figure out just where we're going in this week in history. Big thank you as always to our great sponsors, Camper Kings UK. Over to camperkings.co.uk and have a look at their amazing fleet of camper vans. Um, if you do crow to Cross the Park podcast in your um, in your final payment screen, they will give you a bottle of bubbly and they'll also give you some free insurance as well for the length of time that you've got the camper van. Their clothing will also at theirclothing.com give you 20% off in checkout if you quote ATP20. Uh, we did say on Monday's show we were going to talk a little bit about our affiliate Betmate. Judgy is a lot more better than all of us at this for two reasons. One, he's got a better laptop so he can put videos in. Two, he loves a bet. But us four also like to get onto BetMate. If you get get over on the app, BetMate app, <clears throat> we have an ATP league each week for you to have a look at. Um, it's usually a combined team of Everton and Liverpool players if both clubs are playing. If they're not, then it'll just be the club that's playing, i.e. Liverpool or Everton. You get numerous points. Um, you put a couple of quid on and you can take a pot home, which could be 30 quid, could be 60 quid, depending on how many you're playing. But it's only ever small stakes, a couple of quid and... Um, defenders who you pick if they get the, the most interceptions and tackles you get points for that midfielders with passes and assists goalkeepers with saves strikers with goals so it's not as simple as, as just a first goal scorer or a result it's a lot more fun and you, you can play along on the app during the game and have a look at your points live going up and things and all four of us have got involved and we suggest that you all do as well we've got a league coming up this weekend for the games which are Everton excuse me, Everton at Norwich and Liverpool against Brentford. We've got a league for that. So if you download the BetMate app, search for Across the Park podcast, get involved. It, it costs you a couple of quid and you could take enough home for a Domino's pizza, which I am all about. And just to reiterate, Judgy did say that his winnings go to charity. Mine will not. I, I am not... I'm not that a nice of a person. Mine will go straight to the Ian Mills Pizza Fund. So come and play me on Betmate and see if you can take away my margarita from my mouth. I dare you. Phil, you have got a brand new game for us this week, I think. Is, is it true or false? Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to read 10 statements out, five red, five blue. I'm going to give the red questions to Teddy, the blue questions to you guys. But there will be a chance to score on each other's uh, questions as well. So, shall we get straight into it? Absolutely. Okay, we'll start with the Liverpool statement. So, true or false? So, Terry, you get a chance to answer first, and the Blues can go with or against. On the 25th of May, 2005, Stephen Gerrard connected with a John Arnarisa cross, completing the most famous Champions League comeback in history. True or false? Um... False. I don't think it was Risa. Okay. Okay. Well, let, let me just the the wording of that. So, so yeah, Terry, you're you're locked in, in now. So, so, so Terry's actually, locked in. Terry's locked in. Yeah. So you need to look at probably the date. Then. Ah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, the do you know what? I I, I oh, think what? Phil. I think Phil says it completed. Did On the twenty fifth of May two thousand and five, Stephen Gerrard connected with a John Arnarisa cross. Completing the most famous Champions League comeback in history. No, so Gerard didn't There's score the goal. third goal. Yeah. That's one nil to the Blues, Teddy. Why? I said false. Oh, yeah, you said false. Just for <laughs> the wrong reason. We, 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 we give no, more no, context no. to our answer. 
one all. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. It to you. <laughs> we need to, need to be a little bit a little bit cuter about what you what exactly gets said. Yeah, Phil has definitely had his Capri on today, hasn't he? With with little weirdings like that. Okay, here's the Everton one. The last time Everton scored five goals in a game was on the 19th of September 2020 at home to West Brom. Um, false. Uh, Pricey, do you agree? Mills is the captain. Mills is the captain. He's gone with it. He didn't even ask me. <laughs> do you know why? The thing is, so though, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure. That I, I, I can't give context because if I give my context, Terry just. Can Terry jump in still or. Maybe we need to think about this then in terms of how we do it. All right. Well, I'll, I'll give context to my answer. We scored. Why don't, five you just goals. Have, why don't you just have the blues, have the blues, the reds, have the reds, and whoever's okay. got the most at the end wins? Okay. Let's do it like that. So it's one right, well, to Terry. You've got okay, to so, so, so we're okay, going we, to Ravi Mills. We, yeah, we scored. No, so we, we scored five goals against Tottenham in the FA Cup in, in around February's time. I think we beat them five four. He said league though, didn't he? No, Did you said league. No, okay. We also scored five goals against Fleetwood since then in a five-two cup victory away from home. So one all, one all. Okay, question number two on the red side. In 2013-14, the year that Liverpool finished second under Brendan Rodgers, Suarez and Sturridge finished first and second in the Premier League top goal scorer table. Easy one now. <laughs> True. It is true. With Ooh. 10 goals between them, 21 and 31, but we're one and two in the table. Do you know what I love there? I, lo I love Teddy's playing for money face. <laughs> okay, yeah. Everton question number two. Paul Rideout scored the winning header in the 1995 FA Cup final after Barry Horn's thunderous shot rebound. False. The crossbar. <laughs> False. Game <laughs> Stewart. <laughs> But that's our only trophy. No, <laughs> in, in no. like, he's doing this on no. purpose. These, these are like, these are like the ca this is like we were, we were Jamie Carragher on the podcast, and he was given these little digs about everything, and I didn't even get onto it. That's what Phil's doing. Yeah, <laughs> he knows the pair of us. Be like, no lad, no lad, it was not. <laughs> So just just explain again why that was uh, false. Because it was Graham Stewart had the shot that hit the bar and bounced down and right out there. Yeah, all right. Wasn't I? Didn't realise you'd be so certain about it. Face <laughs> only, only watched again on his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Once a week at least. <laughs> right, Terry. Liverpool signed Ian Rush from Chester to replace the former cop idol Kevin Keegan. Oh. Why? Because we signed Ag to replace Keegan. Correct. No one's got one wrong yet. I think I've, I've made it too easy. Some, some, um, some good knowledge there, Terry. Okay. Everton got off to a, promise, a promising start at home this season, beating Southampton 3 1, with Damari Gray scoring the opening goal. <laughs> you are on borderline <laughs> getting removed. You are just poking the bear here. <laughs> It's false. Why is it false? Because the first goal scorer for Everton was for Charleston. Correct. Good knowledge. Gray didn't get off the mark until the next game when you drew two all with Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Terry. Brendan Rodgers signed Luis Suarez for £23.85 million from Dutch club Ajax. False. Why? Tagli so signed them. Correct. It definitely made it too easy, haven't I? Okay, question four for the Blues. Gary Lineker left Everton in 1986 for a fee of 2.88 million to Spurs. Lineker went on to score 80 goals and 138 appearances for Tottenham. Signed for Barcelona. <laughs> four all. Okay, title decider. Sudden death. Terry, Liverpool's first home game this season was against Burnley, where the Reds come out 2-0 victors. Diego Jota scored the opening goal that day. 
Uh, oh God. Uh, false. Oh, I'll tell you, it's true. Uh, oh, the window. oh, the window is open. The Blues can steal. <clears throat> Last season, Dominic Calvert Lewin scored 16 goals in the Premier League. That's true, though, isn't it? You know, I, I don't know the figure, so I'll, I'll go with you. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, true. Oh, true. It is indeed yeah. true. Come on, Never. you blues. Well done, Price. <laughs> if anyone is listening oh. or watching now, you have got free reign to play Z cars, and I'm, I hope you're in a mixed household. Play it loud. <laughs> play it loud. We are gonna we are gonna give Terry another chance at getting you never walk alone played at the end of the show for an, for another game. But let's press the button. Let's on the time machine. We are going way back this week in history. Pricey, we are going back seventeen years to January two thousand and five. Everton were third in the table in January, and there was a certain. Well, there was a couple of balls midfielders who were playing very well, but there, there was one who was attracting the attention of the Galacticos, the, the, probably one of the greatest clubs in the world, Real Madrid. It was very difficult for him to turn down, which he said later on in interviews. But in short, we lost Thomas Gravison to Real Madrid in, in a move which very nearly derailed our season. I think results with Gravison versus without that season were, were quite scary. The second half of the season, we ended up really limping over into the Champions League places. But I personally remember being absolutely gutted he went. There, there was no chance of keeping him. And, and I was watching it unfold, and you were just thinking, there's there's no way that he's going to gonna say no to Real Madrid. <coughs> can, you, can you take us back to, to 2005, what you were thinking at the time, and, and also maybe now in hindsight, looking back? The same, the same. He was he was an integral part of our team in, in that season, and to get, to, I think he left. He left for broke it down two and a half million. I knew it was a, it was a low fee, and I mean even back then that was a, a really low fee. Uh, I don't know if he was out of contract, and he, he was. Yeah, was he? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was so yeah. he was out of contract. So the, the story goes that in, in the summer of four, when we were in absolute turmoil, he was one of those players who was sort of waiting to see how. What happened? And I don't think in summer 2004, Real Madrid would have ever looked at him. But we got to January, we still hadn't agreed terms, and then it was just we had to just take some sort of money for yeah. him. Yeah, because it wasn't a case of him holding out, knowing no. he was going to go, was it? It was just a case of we couldn't agree. And then when, as you say, when Real Madrid come in, he, he had no option but to. Well, he did yeah. have an option, but you know he couldn't really turn them down. Mm. He had to. He went and, and played for them. Um, I, I loved Gravis when he played for Evan. Did the personality? I mean, he was technically wasn't the best player. Uh, he did have, you know, a bit about him, but his personality more not to put his personality on on the team, but on the fans and getting the fans up for it, and Definitely, just yeah. in, just when you knew he was playing, and he had that Duncan Ferguson thing about him was when he's always he seemed to be up for in the big games, and mm. you could always see us sort of rely on him. Sometimes he'd go push it a bit too far, and he'd get sent off or whatever he'd lose his head. But generally, I think he was a good person to have in the team, um, and, and I, I was a big fan of him. I was a big fan of him. Go to when we left them, and know the story goes that they were after Lee Carsley and whatever else. But yeah, <laughs> yeah that's just a bit of a, uh, probably a bit of a joke. But he was uh, he was brilliant for us. And as you say, once he left, it was obvious he'd left because we, we really missed him, especially for the first couple of months that he left. And so I, I, I was I was gutted, but couldn't blame him, could you? No, no. I was just looking, looking at some stats there. So after Gravison left, we only won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in the second half of the season, um, and still finished fourth. So it shows you how far ahead we were from fifth and sixth come yeah. January, and I think that August to January, that was the best I'd seen Gravison, and I was like, yeah, I was, I was a fan of him. I, I had a connection to him because he was someone who cared. He, he, he connected to us, but I remember just the August to December in in that team that no one thought would do what they did. He was he was so good. Yeah, he was. He was brilliant. As I say, technically not not always the best in terms of you know. Uh, his passing range weren't the best and all that, but when he when he was on form and some of the goals he scored, he scored some belters. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, and as I say, what, the big thing is is once he, as you said, there the, the amount of games we won after he went compared to when he when he was in the team, we badly missed them. And who did we replace him with? 
Well, uh, do you know what I was just going to say? We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll probably do this week in history in a week or two. But it was Mikel Arteta who, who probably did he come in for Gravison, did he? He did. So, so we, I, I was reading up on this, and I was trying to remember as well. Moyes moved Joseph Yobo into midfield for a couple of games, and it was disastrous. He tried to sign Simon Davis. It didn't work because we got Davis in the following yeah. summer. Spurs wouldn't sell. And we got Arteta on loan. He was completely out of favour over in Spain. Um, and I think Arteta, I think, I think I'm think i right in saying he took a little while. He, he wasn't brilliant straight away. He took a while as well. We certainly missed Gravison. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Arteta didn't, from, from my memory, didn't come straight into the team and, and perform well. I think coming from... Uh, from Spain, it was a bit slow, away and it took him a bit yeah. of a while to adapt. Um, but Gravison now is living the dream, isn't he? Mate, uh, have you seen the, the story? And he, he, you know, I, I've watched interviews with him, and he's quite coy on that. You know, he, he doesn't yeah. really go into like I think Alan Myers, friend of the show, done an interview with with Gravison for Sky Sports. I think Gravison's done a couple of little podcasts and things. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't get the impression that he likes to. Talk about it, but there are stories over there that he's living a dream. Yeah. He's a, he's a yeah. millionaire in Vegas. Apparently, yeah, big massive poker poker player in Vegas. Boss that, but he was it. He's one of them players. I mean, I can't remember off the top of my head, one off the top of my head, but he's a player that ex players who played with him have got a story about him. Do you know what I mean? If didn't he turn yeah. up in Nissan? He used to. I'm sure he used to drive a Nissan Micra in the winter, so that his yeah, decent right. didn't get didn't get wrecked in in the rain and whatever else, and didn't. So he did have a Nissan Micra to train them back and stuff like that. He's just a proper character and a personality that you, you know, very, very rare, especially these days. Yeah, definitely. All I mean, feelings got... then that he went to, that he left you. Yeah. No, he came, he came back, didn't he? Eventually, he went to Celtic after Rail and then came back. But you can't, and he got a big welcome when he came back. He came on either on yeah. loan or for, for six months or okay. whatever, mm. and, uh, and that just shows everything. Everyone, you can't. What if you if you Real Madrid come in for you and you go straight into the Real Madrid team? You can't really complain about that, can you? It's not like no. you went to Villa. No. I swear to God. I <laughs> swear to God. Bring back Gary. I never thought I'd say this. <laughs> Bring back Gary. Uh, no, but I think you're right in what you're saying, Price. And I, I think we followed his career at Madrid. It, it didn't work. He went to Celtic. There was, there was this, this photos of him in training where he's he's getting his, his you know, he's getting his little his little man out and he's putting on people's heads and he's Fighting with Rubinho, remember that one when he's yeah. chasing Rubinho around the Real Madrid. Yeah. Rubinho yeah. looks like a cat getting chased by an Alsatian. Just looks didn't like didn't know what When Gravison no. came, the Real Madrid Galacticos didn't have a clue what it hit them. And do you know, had they played him defensive midfielder, so we were thinking he must have gone to Garsley because yeah. Gravison's not, not a defensive midfielder. I watched, I watched them play for Madrid a few times. I watched the Spanish footy every week then, and he was quite good for them. You know, he was kind of yeah. something that they were missing a little bit. I think it's. I think over there to play for Madrid against teams who set up against Madrid is is, is a different kettle, isn't it? To yeah. the Premier League. Um, Price is right in what he's saying. There's some great stories, and and if anyone's interested in some Tommy Gravison stories, head on over to Across the Park Podcast uk. We have some audio podcasts still available on the ATP Extra with the likes of David Weir, Lee Carsley, who actually talks about the rumor that it was him. That Real Madrid wanted. Uh, Marcus Bent is on there as well, and they all talk about some some great stories. Lee Carsley, price he's touched upon there. When it gets to winter, he downgraded to a Nissan Micra for insurance purposes, and it's just unbelievable. Lee Carsley says that he used to go around and put put the players in like headlocks until they like, said, "Tommy, you're the best." Just all little <laughs> stupid stupid things like that. But price just to summarise very quickly on, on Tommy Gravison's effort and career. Thumbs up from you. Yeah, always. Thumbs up for Tommy Gravison, yeah. yeah Can we to actually do it? Absolutely. <laughs> That's <a speech laughs> we'll, set, we'll send this to him and say, Tommy, if you want to come on the ATP Extra, then please do. But um, like I said, the, the replacement, Mikel Arteta, happened at the end of January. Maybe one that we can talk about at the end of January for this week in history on the blue side. Uh, Phil, I think this week in history for you is 2011. And if anyone watched the podcast that we've done or the YouTube show... On Monday, myself and Pricey were having a little bit of a debate about getting the fans together to vision. Something happens at that club for you. That got the fans right back with the club, didn't it? Yeah, and it needed it. I think it's the first thing to say. It, we'd endured a woeful time on, under Woy. And uh, we were languishing and like, well, how, far, how, far, how bad did we go, Terry, 16? Uh, at one point, we were just, we were, I think we were only one place outside the relegation zone. 
So it was it was it was a miserable time under Hodgson. Miserable. Yeah, but no, I think when initially when Zaglish come in, it was as a caretaker type manager, wasn't it? it was it was a part time number, but it nearly become a bit more than that in the end. But I, I think it was right in in the what it did. It sort of brought the sort of the positivity, the, the sort of the joy back into going the game, the fan base. It was great that we won a trophy under him as well. That was really good to see, and yeah, it was uh, it was much needed. Yeah, I think I think you know under Hodgson it was a bit it was a bitterly miserable time, man. You know it was, it was never the right appointment for Liverpool Football Club, in. Um, and then you know when when he got let go, and then obviously Daglish came in as you say as a caretaker initially. His first game was at Old Trafford against Man U, and I think back to when you know Ferguson was calling out Torres as a cheat. And, and like Hodgson was like, oh, Alex, Sarah Alex is my mate, and all that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into like, it's not what you want to hear. You want when you manage it to defend your players. Do you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean. Going into that the return game in the league, and and obviously we, no one wants a dodge in there. So, Daglish coming in, it was a bit of a tonic, wasn't it, for the club and the fans? You know, it was it, it, it felt like one of our own, you know, like one of us, like sort of someone who gets the club and understands what it's about. We had, you know, them other idiots in charge and stuff. It was just an absolute mess. So. Someone coming in and, and and sort of just you know steadying the ship, um, a trustworthy pair of hands. It, it was definitely you know the right move. Obviously, he then um, got made permanent manager, didn't he? Um, and uh, you know, uh, Judgey will, will think back if he was on the podcast of it. He, he ends up on 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 one new year. I think it might have even been that first new year, but just after you know when Daglish look was coming in and. He was having like a debate with me dad and me dad was like oh you know dad is like you know legends of the club and blah 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 and me dad got dead irate when judgey was starting to say he's a dinosaur he hasn't got a clue what he, <laughs> yeah, he hasn't been as a man as a football club phrase me dad was going to choke judgey um, so that's a step in and sort of like cool that one down but i think you know in 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 fairness you know there was something to be said about that he had been out, out of the game a long time and and certainly in a caretaker role it looked right but giving him a three-year contract not really sure that it was the right thing to do. It was maybe a bit of nostalgia over actual, you know, real sort of cold, sort of sensible thought. But that being said, he did get us to two domestic cup finals. You know what I mean? Win and one. He won the League Cup against Cardiff. We've incidentally, you know, we, we we've got there in the FA Cup coming up, haven't we? But um, no, we won won the League Cup under him, and and we got to an FA Cup final, which obviously we we lost that one against uh, to Chelsea, didn't we? But so we can't say is is you know his time as as permanent manager was necessarily a, you know it wasn't successful. He, he still won a trophy and and you know what I mean. It, 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 there's not a lot you can say much more than that as a manager at, at, on a second spell at Liverpool. He, he brought a trophy for the fans and um, and got us to another FA Cup final. Unfortunately, the league wasn't quite there, was it? I think we finished eighth, didn't we, Phil? Which was our worst mm. finish in however long, however many years, a number of years. We finished outside the Champions League places again, which obviously FSG owning the club by that point where you know they needed us in them champions league places for the for the financial side of things so i look at i look back you know and, and think he also signed suarez we talked about that on that game before he's one of the best players i've, I've ever seen in liverpool shirt so there was certainly highlights of having dag leash back as liverpool manager at that time wasn't the phil yeah yeah not much more to add than that to be fair teddy yeah i mean obviously brendan rogers come along a young progressive manager at a time where we were struggling in the league and <clears throat> part of ways amicably it was there was no hard feeling there was no the fans hadn't really turned on Zagli she wasn't like we were chanting for him to be out or nothing like that but I think it was the right move um <clears throat> that, but listen don't let's not talk down his managerial talents he won a lot under Zagli in, in the 80s he's won the Premier League with a different team <clears throat> he's won cups when he come back as a much older gentleman top top manager as well as yeah, player absolutely it's just i think when you've been out of the game for i think he was he hadn't managed a, a team for getting on for 10 12 years it's a big difference isn't it you know the the, yeah. the the way that the dressing room works the way that the player negotiations work the way that you know you deal with players is very very different by that point mm -hmm. you know so it, maybe it was just a bit a, a bit of a culture shock you know a bit of a step too far um you know to different generations but as you say you know there's absolutely no doubt in terms of his managerial credentials you know what he's won and stuff and his status at a liverpool football club you know what i mean no one was looking at when 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 obviously that came to an end the second spell 
there was certainly no one clamoring for him to like you know he's got no, it, it, it didn't tarnish his reputation in any no. way whatsoever no. either no he's got a sense of duty to the club tag leash and that's what brought him in we needed him actually and he knew that he was risking potential reputation and, and all that but you know duty called and once again Kenny Daglish answered that call to Liverpool Football Club and what a man. Yeah. That's it. Do you know what? It was interesting there listening to you discuss the timeline of, of his second, you know, spell, talking about the, the League Cup, the FA Cup, Suarez, but you missed out Charlie Adam and Stuart Downing. Weird. <laughs> yeah. but he did sell he did sell Torres and buy Carl as well, but they, they, yeah, they're them convenient blind spots that you can sort <laughs> of you don't see them, do you? <laughs> Um, I know that that concludes this week in history. Um, I, I think everybody in the city, just tongue in cheek, there, everybody in the city has got massive respect for for Kenny Dalglish, especially around the time that we've just seen the incredible documentary on ITV, which we discussed on Monday. So, um, two great week in histories. If anybody wants us to talk about something um, important to them, first game, favorite players, favorite players, first goal, transfers that are coming up, then please get in touch on the website across the park podcast.co.uk or the Twitter and Instagram, which is at Across the Park PC. We'll certainly touch upon it if we can. We've got one more game to play, which is, it's going to allow, oh, have we not filmed though? No? I thought we did. We have this week. We, we haven't. Have okay. This week, aren't we? Okay. Um, so we haven't got one more game to play. I wish you would have stopped me when I first said at the start of the show that we had another game to play. Would have made me look less of an idiot right now. But that's been your game all along on this episode, Phil. I'm going to get you back someday, lads. Um, thank you so much for listening and watching Game On. If you are listening on the on your favourite podcast app, thank you very much. Please share us. The website is across the park podcast.co.uk. You can listen to every single show we've ever done, including over 50 interviews with ex pros, famous fans, referees. Um, also, if you're on the YouTube, there's a button underneath your streaming video right now. It's called subscribe. Please click that button. It helps us so much. It helps us produce better content, higher quality of content, possibly in the future, even some live streams, which you guys can get involved in via the Q&A at the bottom. We want to do all that for you. We can only do it with more subscribers. So please do that. Please spread the word. From myself, Ian Mills, Andrew Price from the Blue Side of the Park, from Teddy McGiven and Phil Roberts from the Red Side of the Park, thank you for joining us on Game 1. We are back next Monday. See you then.